Good evening, folks. My name's Ted Boggs. My mother, Helen Stosel, and her brother, Walter, were riders on the orphan train in 1920 or 21. She told me a lot about that over the years, and uh, one of the terrible things that she told me was on this train ride, you already seen how the kids got off the train and everybody looked at them. There was a little boy, two little boys, and uh, one of them was a strong, healthy child, and the other one was kind of weak and sickly. And uh, there was a man and his wife took the older boy, and he wouldn't take the little one. The man was a preacher there in this town. I don't know where it was. My mother held this little boy for hours on end because he couldn't move prior. He didn't know where he was and didn't know where he was going. Well, Helen and Walter got off this train in Waxahachie. Uh, there was a man that owned a hardware store, and uh, he and his wife took my mother and her brother. Walter was going to help him in the store, and uh, my mother was going to help the lady in the home. Sadly, the man died about three months after they took the two children. And I'm not quite sure how it happened, but there must have been somebody in Waxahachie that was in contact with a lady here in Sulphur Springs, and I think her name was Mrs. Bass. They were sent from Waxahachie to Sulphur Springs. And again, I don't know how Granddaddy Adelsey, and I'm going to call him Granddaddy because he's the only Granddaddy I ever uh, he took Helen and Walter and he raised them as their own. They were about 13 and 15, I think, when they got here. When they got here, uh, Granddaddy Adelsey asked uh, Walter, he said, uh, Would you like a watermelon? Well, sure, he liked watermelon. He didn't get watermelon. Though. So he said, Well, go out there and Go out there in the patch and keep yourself warm. So he went out there and he found a big old watermelon. He come lugging it back to the house. And uh, Granddaddy Ed said, okay, he said, give him a butcher knife. I said, now cut it. So he did. His green is gorgeous. <laughs> Didn't look like any watermelon he ever saw. Granddaddy says, come on now, Walter. He says, let's go out there and I'll show you how to find a rifle. So that was his first experience on the farm in Riley Springs. They were orphaned by their mother and father dead in 1918 and 19. And uh, their father was quite prosperous in that he owned land in Brooklyn, New York, a town of uh, Brownstone, a big apartment house. And uh, the father died first. The mother then entrusted a good friend of theirs named Poe. He was going to see to their welfare. As soon as he could, after they both died, he put them in the orphanage. He put them in the uh, orphanage, and they weren't there two or three months of any of them in the orphanage. In 1940, my mother knew where the cemetery was in New York City that her parents had buried, and not knowing how to get a hold of anybody up there, she wrote to the keeper of the cemetery and asked about the grave where her folks were buried. The lady wrote back and said, yes, she, she knew about that because there was just recently a lady in there asking about the same grave. And she, gave, she sent the name back and uh, my mother wrote her, yeah, and we know where your uh, half-brother is, Willie. There were two brothers by previous marriage, previous uh, wife had died. Uh, my grandfather then had some relatives in Budapest and he sent over there for one of the young ladies to come and be his wife. Her name was Susanna Klinova. And uh, they had the two children, Walter and Helen. So when she found out where Willie was, Teddy had died, she found out where Willie was and she wrote him and they invited us up to New York City. 
Can you imagine riding in an old car from here to New York City in 1940 on a highway that's not much 12 feet wide? Where we went, I don't know how many days it took to get there, but we finally got there and we met a whole raft of relatives. There was something else I wanted to tell you, but I forget what it was. <laughs> so, with, oh, I have one, one other thing. I have a granddaughter in this room, right here on the front, the lady in the white. But uh, that's the only one of my relatives here now. So I thank you for your time and attention, and I thank you for the opportunity to talk to you. Thank you so much.